hear from Tim Wilcox and Car Carolyn Pam. I had the pleasure of visiting their farm a couple of years ago, see their awesome value added production system. Good to have you, Tim. Take it away. Hi there. Um, busy day on the farm, so uh, trying to squeeze this in. Thanks for coming. I'm just going to kind of go th quickly through this presentation and let's uh, get started. Just a little bit of, about our farm. We're in the Pioneer Valley of Massachusetts. Um, you can advance the slides. Um, we have been farming for just over 15 years, started with one acre. Now we're growing on 70 acres um, with 50 to 60 acres devoted to vegetable crops. We do a lot of wholesale of specialty organic vegetables um, to distributors, to local stores and restaurants. Um, we have value added products, which I'm gonna talk more about. And we also, as part of our business, uh, operate a food hub that we started um, during uh, the beginning of the pandemic that provides home delivery for our local area um, and aggregates products from about 50 farms. Um, there's some other shots of our farm here, if you advance. Um, <clears throat> this is where we farm. It's a pretty nice location. Very, uh, always very grateful to be where we are. This is the view from Sugar Mount Sugarloaf uh, with uh, one of our fields in the foreground. And then uh, the main farm is sort of off in the, in the distance uh, on, in the background. Uh, you can advance. Um, this is our pack barn. We've built a number of buildings on our property in the last few years. Um, this is just kind of get a sense of uh, the, the workplace that, that we operate in, can advance it again. Our kitchen building is a, a similar looking building. Um, didn't have a shot of that. Uh, growing a lot of crops. Uh, we do a mixture of sort of uh, winter growing tunnel tomatoes in the summer for, you know, heirloom tomatoes for fresh market. Um, we do a lot of herbs, lots of different vegetables. Um, so since 2013, we started making this hot sauce, uh, sriracha, because we were doing a, a pepper festival at our farm, sort of a fall harvest festival with music and you know chilies and chili cook-off and what and we, we we decided that we wanted to have something fun to sell that we were making with our own pepper so we we cooked up some of this sauce and we're very surprised that people really responded well to it so um over the years we've been uh scaling up our production of our um sriracha sauce sauce which is the main product, um, but also um, adding, you can start scrolling through here. Um, there's some other shots of the other products, salsa, two flavors, um, and then passata, which is just tomato puree straight from our own tomatoes, goes from a uh, fresh tomato to a jar in the same day, jardinera, which is a mixture of cauliflower, celery, um, carrots and peppers. It's uh, in like an oil and vinegar. We also do dried whole peppers that we sell in one ounce uh, pouches. And uh, we've started doing powders, chili powders, so smoked paprika. And um, the most recent product that we've launched is uh, dried herbs. So um, with all of this uh, <clears throat> All, all of these products kind of have like a two-stage thing. You know, we're growing them during the season, preserving them during the harvest season, and then um, working on packaging, manufacturing throughout the, the rest of the year. Um, just to give you a sense of where our business is, um, the red bar is our value-added uh, products enterprise. And, you know, as you can see, as our farm has grown, you know, the value-added products are really driving the growth. Um, we, you know, the theory was that um, this is an enterprise that's potentially like more profitable than farming, um, which does seem to be the case, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of 
challenges that come along with this opportunity. So one of the biggest um, advantages is that uh, we are essentially, you know, with our with our wholesale, with farmers market, with CSA, you have a fairly limited market uh, for the fresh produce. Um, you know, at the farmer's market, it's limited to whoever's walking by at that particular moment. CSA customers, you know, maybe there's a few hundred people in your radius um, that you can contact or attract with your with your CSA program. But uh, these products that are shelf stable, it can be sold anywhere um, and are kind of uh, they're relevant to basically everybody. So that's kind of our... Um, that was sort of, you know, another another thinking is sort of making our our farming uh, a little bit more accessible to people because um, you know there's a, a limited number of people who are going to buy a CSA share, but the number of people who would have a bottle of hot sauce that costs eight dollars is uh, is basically everybody potentially. Um, so another main goal was to sort of keep growing our company, providing year-round opportunities for employment for our staff without doing additional cropped acreage. Um, I kind of said some of this already, but so our products are sold in all 50 states. Um, we do a lot of direct shipping uh, to small retailers like little wine shops, wine and cheese shops, um, specialty grocery retailers, um, pretty much all over the place. Uh, we're also in Whole Foods in the Northeast and uh, North Atlantic region, so New York City through New England, which we don't sell any produce to, you know, we, all of our produce is going sort of to local independence and, and not, we don't sell any produce into Whole Foods. You know, so on Instagram, we see this kind of stuff come through all the time. Like somebody bought our product in Idaho in a place I will never go to. And um, it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, we are we're doing quite a lot uh we built our our kitchen where we are doing production on the farm in 2018 2019 was the first year that we we did it and um that project took about three years to put together to get the loans the financing uh we got a, a grant that was part of the financing package um so you know Biggest challenges are, you know, the the physical infrastructure that you need. Um, you know, before before we built our own place, we were renting a shared kitchen um, in Greenfield, which is about twenty minutes away from our farm. Um, we were there for five years, and that was uh, pretty challenging with the the time constraints that we had. Um, being a farm, being you know, having a, a short harvest season of about six to eight weeks for peppers. Um, and we just figured that we couldn't really scale our, our business without building our own facility. So, um, so that's a big challenge. Running a second business on top of the farm has, has been a huge challenge. Um, my job is essentially running a, a separate crew that works in the um, kitchen pretty much every day, all year. Um, so we have an amazing team on the farm that is running veg production, wholesale, and then the other uh, sort of stuff that's going on, on the farm because I have my work cut out for me. Um, we're growing, we're doing about 50% of our total sales with value added currently. Um, the other main challenge is uh, farming, you know, as everybody knows, is bad enough business um, already with a lot of your costs coming in the beginning of the year and not getting paid until the end of the year. Well, with value added, not only do you have to grow the vegetables, you have to then process them, store them. And then, you know, you might get some sales a year to 18 months out. So the payback schedule for the investment that is going into these products is much, uh, it's kind of delayed. So scaling up has been a challenge just financially for us. Um, so it's good to, you know, have, uh, good relationship with your lenders and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, regulatory compliance is a huge one. Farming, you know, we're, we're a fairly large farm. So we were doing FSMA food safety 
um, compliance already, but you know, having um, acidified products requires having a FDA like inspected facility. So that that's you know more of Caroline's um, expertise, but that's been a a huge um, challenge. Uh, you know, risk to crops is always a concern because you know this was kind of intended to be a hedge against major crop loss um, that we would have, you know, something else to do uh, for income. But, you know, we're completely reliant on the crops that we're growing for this and even more so uh, now. So last season was a good test of that because it was a pretty challenging season for peppers and tomatoes specifically. And we did suffer a lot of losses, but we, we were able to um, process um, pretty much all of the tomatoes and peppers that we needed. So, so that was kind of a relief, even though it was very stressful at the time. So the way I'll just talk a little bit about the way that we do things. Um, like I was saying, each of the different products has like a bring it out of the field into the kitchen to preserve it step. And then uh, our goal is to get it into a holding form so that we can keep it in store, keep our own products and our own produce in storage so that we can use those as ingredients to make our products. The one exception is the Posada, which does come in as a tomato and goes out um, in a jar. Uh, for our salsa, we're bringing in tomatoes, blanching, pureeing, they go in a bucket, the buckets go in a freezer. We just got a grant to build this freezer last, uh, last season. Uh, so it's great having everything on the farm now. Um, growing for processing has been a kind of a revelation after doing market gardening, uh, CSA, wholesale. We have a lot more flexibility in terms of the quality standards um, for processing. And also the time management has been really great because if you, you know, what we're doing is we're growing about 10 acres of stuff out of the 50 that we're cropping is for processing on farm. So we're able to send a crew out to tomatoes, peppers, or tomatillos, and basically just pick everything that's there, put it on the truck on a pallet, bring it in. It's just way more efficient than the, the produce wholesale. You know, we're picking to order everything. We're going to 10 different fields. You know, it's moving a lot of people around. It's going out and harvesting, you know, exact numbers of bunches <clears throat> of things. So having a little bit more scale and more flexibility on the growing side has been has been really great. Um, so that's kind of how we build the pallets. Um, you know, five people can pick a truck full of tomatoes in half a day. Um, it's pretty efficient. Bring it into the kitchen warehouse, just roll it right off the truck because we built our kitchen sort of for our purposes. So it's kind of designed to bring in produce efficiently, bring pallets out efficiently. Um, and uh, yeah, don't make the mistake of trying to make a value added product line with just your seconds, because that is I, it's probably the question that I get asked the most. And the answer is really, if you, if, if you want to, if you, if you're serious, it really is only worth it if you do a lot. And if you need to do a lot, then you need to grow specifically for your products. Um, so of the tomato, of the products that we, of crops that we grow for processing, tomatoes, tomatillos, lots of peppers, onions, this is a shot of our onion field. And, you know, with the onions, we're bringing the onions in for our salsa, peel them, roast them, put them in the, uh, Cuisinart. It's like a it's big, um, a big chopper. And then those go into a bucket. So we don't have to cure the onions. It's kind of a big, uh, a load off. Um, that's often pretty challenging for a large, a large amount of onions. This is our tomato field right before it, you know, gets wiped out with disease. This is when it looks good. Um, so I spoke a little bit already about um, so, some of the financial challenges um, of doing value added, which is, you know, it requires a lot of startup costs. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, working capital involved, just amassing the ingredients, amassing the packaging, storing the packaging, uh, getting your crew 
trained and ready to go and getting all the equipment. I mean, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a pretty all consuming project for Caroline and myself for the last several years. Um, and we've gotten various uh, loans through FSA, through farm credit to build uh, buildings, to buy equipment. And we've gotten some pretty remarkable grants from the state of Massachusetts, including 200, 20,000 for equipment for the kitchen that was part of the um, food ventures program. So that was, that was a pretty great grant to get. So, you know, product development is also a pretty, pretty major project. Um, in order to be legal to sell or licensed to sell value added products wholesale, you have to go through a certification process. You need to get a wholesale license, which means that you need to have, um, if you're, we sell certified organic products. So there's a whole separate certified um, uh, organic certification process. Then all of the products have to be approved for manufacturing by Cornell or uh, UMaine. They have food uh, science labs where they help you develop a product. So for each product, we have critical factors that we have to meet. So uh, for Posada, you know, we're just heating up the tomato puree to 190 degrees, has to go into the bottle at 190 degrees. Uh, it's got to be at pH of four. So we add a little bit of lemon juice and then we test the pH in the lab before we bottle. And it, the lab, it's just like our office. Um, and then after the jars are filled, they go on their side because we're not we're not like washing or sanitizing the jars. The jars are coming straight from the factory. The product goes in the jar, and then the heat of the product itself is what um, pasteurizes um, the container and the product. So with the other products um, for the hot sauce, you know, all the peppers are fermented. So we have to we have to document that we reached target pH uh, during the fermentation process before we can put the pepper mash into the cooler. Uh, once it's got the right pH, we can store the mash for up to two years. Um, and then inspections, health inspections, those are always fun for anybody in the food service industry. Um, we'll tell you how great they are, but. Our town is a pretty sleepy agricultural town, so they've been great to work with and we haven't really had that many problems, but it's something to think about if you want to build a kitchen. Uh, I think that's the end. If, um, if there are any questions, I can answer some questions. Great, thank you, Tim. Tons of great info. Um, <clears throat> some info coming in the chat about Vermont uh, possible support. Um, and it was, see, questions about what variety of onions and uh, what do you use to dry your produce uh, for products okay. like powdered pepper? And right. if you could answer quickly so we can move on, that'd be yeah. great. Uh, we like sweet onions. So we grow a lot of Walla Walla and uh, red tropea onion. They're like an Italian heirloom. Those are great, easy to peel, especially when they're coming straight out of the field. Um, we did, we also got a grant to install a commercial dehydrator. Uh, it was manufactured by Nile Systems. They do a lot with cannabis. Uh, but we're using it for food, which is probably not as good of a business, but um, it was a pretty, pretty major, uh, it cost like $60,000. But we can put um, 12 of the bakery speed racks that you saw in the picture of the herbs. Uh, we can put 12 racks in there at a time. And for peppers, it takes about a week for herbs, it takes like a day. But we got a we got an ag energy grant because uh, uh, it's like efficient or something. So one last question: What machine do you use to separate seeds and skins of peppers and tomatoes? Uh, there there wasn't a picture of it in here, but it's 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 called a Vincent dewatering screw press. It's essentially like a big food mill, but it has um, you know it has a really big electric motor on it, and then it has uh, back pressure uh, that we plug into an air compressor. So it, it sort of like crams all of the, the mash into the screen as it, as it turns around and it, um, it extracts a very nice, um, nice, nicely textured um, full extraction. 
So it was a pretty serious piece of equipment. And real quick, can you describe the herb herb dehydrator? So the dehydrator, it looks like a walk-in cooler. Um, and we ideally you would build it inside of a building, but we didn't have any building space uh, footprint left uh, to build anything. So it's outside on a, on a pad and we built a shed around it. Um, but it basically has, you know, a big uh, furnace, like a forced air furnace on one end and then a huge fan on the other end. Um, and there's also a dehydrator kind of built in, but it's all, you know, done at the manufacturer. And then they, they kind of just like install this box um, I, at your place and you can just roll in. It's just, since it's not in the same building, we actually use a box truck with a lift gate to get the racks in and out of the de dehydrator. Works okay. Thank you so much, Tim. Tons of info in a short time. We really appreciate taking the yeah, time. If, if anybody wants to uh, hit me up for additional uh, questions, you know, 15 minutes is not a lot of time to present all this, but um, you know, we we like having visitors here. And if you want to come check out what we're doing, you know, just just drop us a line. Well, that's great. Very generous of you. And thanks again.